If you're looking to become a more interesting guitarist, your musical skills will get better 10 times faster by studying a legend who found a unique approach. I've spent countless hours listening to Bob Weir and figuring out what makes him so different from the average guitarist, and I discovered something that surprised me. So let's walk through the five most important steps of Bob's approach and look at how you can apply them to your own unique playing the next time you grab your guitar to practice. So let's first look at a super common way to approach this section of Tennessee Jam. So I was just playing some regular old bar chords, just strumming the whole thing. So the C based on the E shape, if you know your cage shapes, and then a C diminished seven, F in the A shape, back to C. Sounds great, you know, perfectly fine, a very common way to do that, but there is a better way and there's the Bob approach. So let's check out what he did there. So he was doing something that really helped tie these chords together, but first off, he's just playing small versions. So playing the big, you know, full chords can work, but when you got a lot of things going on in the band, like when he was playing with the dead, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. It can be a little bit too much. So this helps kind of leave a little space for everybody else and cuts through the mix a little better. So he's playing just the top three strings, right? Like this. And what he's doing is gluing all of these together by playing a pedal on the top. So you can play a pedal on the bottom or a pedal on the top. In this case, he, he's playing it on top. So it's a C the whole time. That's just pedaling and that ties all the chords together. So a really unique thing, right? So you've got C, here's your C diminished seven. Here's your F, still having this here. Oh, let's go like an F6, you could say. Back to a different way of playing C. And you have these notes right here going down like that, which is another thing that we'll look at later that in another tune that he uh, he does really well. So tying that all together. So this next approach is a way that he adds movement to chords, but let's first listen to a real common way for playing this section of Big River. So same thing with this one, I was just playing big bar chords, so A, to A7, D to D7, nothing wrong, that sounds great, but let's check out a way that Bob would add a little bit more movement to it. So he's playing specific voicings, and that refers to each note, how it's played in a chord. So like that is one way of playing A, and that's a different way of playing A. So two different voicings, it refers to the actual individual notes, and then voice leading is where the notes are going next, so bet between two chords. So this one to this one, it's leading to a specific place, and in this case, it's really giving a lot of movement. It's moving these notes down the whole time, so it's giving this downward momentum stuff, so very different than just playing it like this, which isn't too bad too. You have this note goes to here, that goes to there, but in this case, the way he was doing it, this. So what you wanna do is think about how you're playing chords, and even if it's just taking a chord like this that you, are, you might already know, and don't play the whole thing. Think about if I play just these top three, these two, and how they sound, and then how they relate to the next chord that you're playing. And knowing cage chord shapes is fundamental for learning Bob's style. And the easiest way to learn them is to have a PDF with them all laid out in an organized manner. So check out my free cage cheat sheet. I'll put a link in the description uh, down below. So this next one is all about breaking chords up. And let's just do another common approach to playing this part of Stella Blue. Again, just playing big, you know, blocky bar chords, which is a great foundation, and they can sound great on their own. Well, you know, I was just playing B, right, to E, and then A, E, and B. Sounds like a kind of like, makes it sound like more of a big rock song like that. But let's hear the Bob approach. It's gonna be very, very different. So 
So he's definitely doing a lot of different things there, but the one I wanna focus on is just chord fragments. So breaking these chords up. So taking this shape right here, right? But just playing the middle four, then you don't have to actually bar down. You know, you play it like this instead. And it's a specific way of playing B or just playing this shape. So, you know, you can apply it to, if you're playing A like that, to B, C, you know, whatever it is. You know, try to move these things around and get familiar with playing them all over the place. And then he had all this, you know, kind of lead stuff going on here. And then for E, not even playing the chord, but then A, right? You've got A like this, all these little fancy things, and then all this fancy stuff here, right? And But I want to highlight too, playing right here, A, in this C shape. Again, if you don't know your chord, uh, your cage shapes, can you check out that, that cage cheat sheet? Here it is in the C shape, just playing these three. So it's actually just a triad, they call it. Tri meaning three, right, it's a th three note chord. And then a E over G sharp. So it's a specific way of playing E. It's a it's a slash chord. So it's playing E over the G sharp no note. It's not a G sharp chord, just that note right here. So the first way I played it, you know, the common way was just like that with an E in the bottom. This has a G sharp. So you end up with A, G sharp, a specific way of playing it, gives it some movement, but we're not playing the full chord, just this to this, right? So this next one is all about keeping it going, but let's first listen to a very common way someone might jam out the ending of He's Gone where it's not really going anywhere, right? So this one's just kind of playing around an E chord, you know, and I'm just playing an E like this, and it sounds okay, but it's not really going anywhere. So let's check out a way that Bob, from this one version I heard, had a lot of movement and really kept things going. So what's happening here, is it's first, you know, really melodic, loose, and it's not just playing a chord, you know? So just because you you may think you're a rhythm player in a band doesn't mean you have to just play chords. You can you can open things up, you know, and play single notes, or in this case, a lot of, a lot of what they call dyads, two notes. And um, But what he was doing was continuing an idea. That's how he's keeping things going. So he's got an idea going like this. And then moving it up. Right? So, and then throwing it higher up like that. But the idea is to be having some sort of idea that you're playing around some sort of melodic thing or, or a rhythmic thing and then moving it somewhere else just, or, or just doing it in a way that it continues. And that really opens up playing and a lot of rhythm players don't do that. They'll just stay. Um, that's why if you just play bar chords, you know, it, it can work and it's a great start, but you get very stuck, you know? So this is where it keeps it going. So in your own playing, just look for little ideas you've got and how okay, how would you then expand upon that and, and keep it going. And now we're getting a glimpse into Bob's approach, but if you wanna dive even deeper than we have in this video, check out the Bob Weir five day challenge. I not only peel back more layers, but it's focused on how to apply these tactics yourself and developing your own sound. So check out the link in the description below to uh, get started. Now let's look at a really common way of playing over the other one like this. Now, let's try to take it out there using a little bit more of a Bob approach. So if we look at how an E minor is played pretty typically, it would be just with the notes right in a row. So the next note here, the next note here, and that's gonna be in thirds. So you go up one, two, three, right? One, two, three from there. So the thirds, thirds, and if you wanna spice it up a little bit, you can add on a minor seventh right here, and that's also gonna be up a third. But what we can do is open these up. 
So this would be what they call a closed voicing, and we could play an open voicing. So taking this one and putting it up an octave over here, and then the first two notes are now separated by a fifth, a perfect fifth. And that would be called quintal harmony if you were focused on playing things a lot in fifths, or quartal harmony playing fourths. And it doesn't have to be like exact, you know, just one or the other, but you can be mixing, matching, but kind of focusing on that, you know, quintal sound. That's the same thing as a power chord right there. Just a, a, a P5, right? The power chord, right? But you're playing this note now up here, right? And skipping this one. And that would be a minor six. So it doesn't have to all be perfect, but it's spreading it out, right? And then playing this one up here. So that gives you a really open sound, very different than, than that sound right there. So it translates to this on the guitar. Right? And so I was moving around kind of the, the scale, you know, the mode you got going and playing things like this, these little pieces of the chords focused on primarily playing fourth. So here it is, up a fourth, up a fourth, up a fourth, up a fourth. And that gives it a very different spacey sound and really opens it up when you want to take things out there. See, the thing is Bob Weir's approach to playing is more like a jazz pianist than a typical guitarist. And one of his biggest influences is McCoy Tyner. And like Bob supporting Jerry, he supported John Coltrane. And the more I learn from Bob Weir's relationship to the guitar, the better and more unique my own playing has been getting. But not understanding how other roles in a band approaches things is gonna hold you back. So check out this video here where I show you how Jerry Garcia thought about improvising, which will help you connect more with others the next time you play with a band.